myself a motor I'm gonna get 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 myself a motor It's lunch therapy time. It's it's Commando Friday. We don't have a guest today. We're just rogue. We're just going rogue. We've got no guest. We got all kinds of crazy things that we're gonna explore. I got a I got a wild shirt on today because I am just up for this game we call lunch therapy. The uh, goal here is to take a break from the crap. I want to check in with our people. That's uh, one of the things that I wanted. The guest today is the chat room. I want to see how people are doing. I've had a, I've had a, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I said this on Tuesday. I've had a rough, I don't know, week or so. Kind of up and down all over the place. I don't know what's going on. Somebody was saying, you know, mercury and retrograde, stuff like that. I don't know. Good to see you, Just Jay. I think Just Jay was having some of that. I guess trauma scape in their in her mind in the last couple of weeks because I saw on her uh, YouTube channel she was also expressing some I don't know stress I guess some people call it stress Jason Edelman hey it's great to see you here today I've got my loud shirt on it's Commando Friday so that's about all I got on I hope everybody is doing well. Um, and if you're not, that's okay too. I haven't been doing too well lately. Let's look at the agenda here. So here's the agenda. First up. Oh, good. Just Jay's back. That's the thing about us is we're like, uh, hummingbirds. They bounce back. They fall down. They get right back up. They fall down again and get right back up. That's what we do. It's about recovery, right? That's right. Uh, recovery. Yeah, yeah, I like the whisper. Right. I like the, I, that. Speaking of recovery, Floss was at some kind of a dinner last night and just totally like blew out his voice. So that should be interesting. He's going to be here today. Uh, he, uh, right now, he's just sort of a disembodied voice, which is kind of nice. Because um, I don't know what we don't have to see his face. Really I like seeing his face, though. I don't know what you're talking about. I like his face. Um, okay, so. Big point I want to make, we have 1,973 subscribers. Seems like that is something we need to change. We need to get it at a, a two on the beginning of that. So my challenge is to you is to share this thing. If you're on YouTube, grab the URL, put it on, you know, the, the website address or sh click the share button. Let's get this thing out and wide because we need, there's a lot of people out there that we need to uh, heal with our therapeutic, unlicensed therapeutic um, ways of being here on the show. Modalities, one might say. Modalities. Um, I got today's topics over there. We're gonna have topics. We're gonna talk about them. We're gonna talk about these topics amongst ourselves. Ahoy, Chuck Goldsmith. I wanna hear what Chuck has to say about this stuff because Especially because I, you know, Chuck does a lot of, I think, talking into the chat. So sometimes we get really wacky stuff um, because Siri decides, hey, I don't want to say what Chuck's saying. I want to say something else. And that, that can make for some fun time. Howard Aronin. Howard Aronin is the comedy god. Howard Aronin. It says Howard Aronin comedy god. And I'm going with that. I'm totally going with that. Holy. Just tell everybody to subscribe, it's free. Thank you. That's another thing I want to point out. It's totally free. We're talking about YouTube subscribers. So if you got like a Gmail account, you just log into your Gmail account or whatever, go over to YouTube and then subscribe. It's not that it's not that bothersome. It doesn't cost anything. It makes a big difference to me. Um, holy, holy. Chuck says, wildness. Yes, it's like auto texting. It can't spell. Exactly, and it invents new words. Um, all right, so today's topics, we're gonna do this check-in. This, this is the check-in right now. Um, I want to say that we're gonna have our 400th episode, 400 episodes of Lunch Therapy, that's happening. I believe it's around November 4th. 
which is also coinciding with the Ojai Film Festival. But I want to know from y'all. Oh, good. Camel is back as herself. I want to know from y'all. What do you want for a 400th episode? Like some kind of usually like a 100, 200, 300. We bring a lot of people back. And we do like, we just check in with everybody, all the people who have been on the show and all that stuff. And that's super fun. And we can do that. Uh, or we can do something else. Yeah, it's tough being me. That's one of the things. It is. It's a, it's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, well, I don't know. Maybe we won't. Uh, hopefully we'll make it to 400. You never know. Holy cappy add a ship. Uh, get the cast of Kill Tony to live stream with Lunch Therapy. Awesome. I would love that. That sounds good. Maybe um, maybe you can get on that, Chuck. To be like, hey, Lunch Therapy's having its 400th episode. Got to get the Kill Tony. Kill Tony is, a, is an ongoing show. Maybe Chuck can tell us about it. But they, uh, they bring comedians on and they do really funny stuff. And then they talk to them about their bits and stuff. It's a really neat show. Uh, 400, yeah. Four, it seems impossible, 400, right? I want Blas to create a dance and teach it to us before the 400th episode, and then we'll all do to get do it together live. Wow, I like that. I um, Blas and I were cooking up something, too, that I really want to achieve. Uh, it's a secret, though. It's totally top secret, but it's a, it's a lifelong dream of mine. Uh, the other day, I saw something that made me think that maybe it's possible. And so now that I know that it's possible, I think it's going to happen. Richard Gaddis is here. Richard Gaddis is playing on Saturday night. Uh, he's doing playing all your requests. If you please go see him Saturday night, if you haven't, or if you have, uh, it is just a great show of old standards and probably some new ones. I'm hoping that he's going to sing Shaka Khan. But, you know, I can only dream. Uh, while I'm doing this, I'm actually trying to find the flyer. And there it is. There it is. There's the richest Richard Gaddis flyer. Please go see him if you haven't. Doors open at 6.30. Showtime is at 7.30. No cover. No cover. There will be cover songs, but there will be no cover at the door. We're going to move right into the... The final chakra, today's the final chakra. We've gone through all the chakras except for the last one. It's a big surprise. Everybody's been wondering like, what is the final chakra? What is it? Then we're gonna talk about the world's smallest dinosaur. It won't get too science-y, don't worry. World's, it's more of a like a, it's another bit of animal therapy, the world's smallest dinosaur. Then Futura Transportus. Some people love that segment. It's where we look at like, how are we gonna travel in the future? And I promise you, it will not get too scientific, but you will be shocked at how we will travel in the future. And then we're going to get into the dance break, which is Dia Matrona. I don't know what that means. Maybe it's to make it look that up, but they're really good. So let's get into the chakras. I got Mr. Um, Mr. No Voice coming in. Uh, some of you noticed his bagpipes at the beginning. Howard did. Uh, that was cool. Um, he's quite amazing cool shirt with the dark background yeah that's right that's right i got into that whole gaddis thing and missed the whole point of his statement i should be the front man for lunch therapy as a kill tony guest representing in attempts to achieve peacefulness and anger management please put some of that anger to work let's get it going Bloss, can you make make up a dance please <laughs> yes we got that that's happening <clears throat> Oi to Richard Gaddis. This is a lot about the comments today, so um, I'm really going to pay attention. Don't sky jump, go virtual we. Undercover Angel, one of my favorite songs. I don't know about y'all, but uh, Undercover Angel, Midnight Fantasy. You know this one? I never had a dream that made sweet love to me. That's kind of a weird, weird song. <laughs> and as a child, to kind of like it and think it was so great. I don't know. It's really weird. You're welcome, <laughs> Richard Gaddis. I think we're gonna have to really analyze those lyrics because that, I mean, I was going straight into my membrane uh, right through the years with no filter because when you're a kid, you just take it. It's all, 
truth, right? Nothing is, nothing is a lie when you're a kid. Everything is just discovery, discovery, sponge, sponge, sponge. And they throw a song like Undercover Angel and you're like, it's just in there forever. Can't get it out, it's just trapped. Hoipy Commando Freud. I hope everybody's uh, commandoing today because no worries, Cammy. have fun with Lamb Chop. We're gonna be doing more Lamb Chop this weekend. I'm so excited. Uh, Jay Krimis has given us his uh, bar and we're gonna shoot some segments and it's gonna be so cool for the Equal Rights Amendment. Um, just hit the keyboards and play a little, play brown sugar and that'll get rid of your anger. Wow, that's a good one. Uh, it's like coming back from a car crash, the relearning. Wow. Okay. Get on that Kill Tony thing. And I'll get on the chakras. Here we go. I'm bringing in uh, Bloss. He's, he's looking a little, looking a little, he's looking a little weird. He's looking a little weird. Sucks. There you, are. you know, one of the things I've noticed over the all the guests that we've had on the show, like, you know, I don't know how many guests have we had, like 150 or something like that. They always Maybe more like probably 200. The comedians usually when you bring them on the screen have some kind of weird thing going on. Either they they have a mask on their face or they got the Oculus on or they're not there or they, um, they are like zipping up their pants. What is going on, Bloss? What is happening over there? What is wrong with you? Can you see me? Can I can see, see you. you. I think you're frozen you're maybe, but you're not. I know you're not. How am I frozen? I know I'm moving, I'm moving. <laughs> oh, that's good. It's interesting, it's like a picture. It's, are you masking up now? A... Now you're gonna mask up? After I, don't, you... I, I don't wanna get anybody sick. I don't wanna get any hummingbirds sick. Yeah, oh, good idea. You know what I, mean? I don't want to get anyone sick. That's a good idea. But you know what? I yeah. got to tell you. What? I can't breathe. I can't. I think I'm going to pass Take the out. damn thing off. This is the internet. The only virus you can get is a, it's from a phishing attack. Nobody understands any of it. Nobody knows what it is. The only virus you can get is m malware. Malformedware. Oh, oh. Are you oh, in this China? This is in my mask. That's why. Oh, that's just your this face? This isn't my mask. This is my, my, it's my son's mask. It's too small. I can't breathe. It was suffocating. Are you foaming at okay, the mouth? I'm going to use my... No, no, no. I, I, it, I had a scratchy throat like Wednesday. I went to a birthday dinner. And then last night, I went to another... We went to a celebration birthday dinner for my friend who passed away last year. Oh. It was his birthday. And we decided... Uh, Big Sean, Big Sean, love you, bro. Uh, we decided to That's celebrate terrible. on his birthday instead of on the anniversary of his passing, which is on the 28th of the month. But his birthday was yesterday, so we did that. And it was so loud. We were at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. And my oh, daughter yeah. drove up from Irvine, and it was so loud. And I just kept talking and talking. And so he kept saying, you shouldn't talk. And I go, OK. And I kept talking and talking. And then I woke up this morning, and hi, everyone. What's up, Bobby Birds? Oh, god, there you are. There you are. I have, for a second there, you were just wearing that mask and you're frozen? frozen there. You were totally frozen, but it was cool. You got that special um, could you, LA could school you district. Um, yeah. yeah, we heard your story. It was it was, it was, was beautiful that you had that commemoration oh, okay. for your friend here. who passed away. I talked away. for a second. Yeah. And that was good that you did it. Yes, yes. You know, Sean, and, it's, and it's, a, it's a good use of your voice. Um, next time, try and breathe from your center right from your center, from your diaphragm, as they say. Now, I've diaphragm, got the remedy for see? this. I got the remedy for your voice. We, I, I would say it would probably be throat chakra, but we're not on throat chakra today. We are on the final chakra. Do, do you know what it oh. is? Do you know what the final chakra is? Uh, I, forgot the, I forgot the name. It's, it, we did it last week. This one is... I forget the, what it's called, but I know it's the, it's the. Open your eyes. Tier, open your eyes. Right? Open your eyes. Well, I'm going bald. Are you? Open your eyes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, it's this. It's the. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 think of I royalty. Remember, I remember the name of it. I forgot. Think of England. Close your I eyes and think of England, as they say. It is 
the crown chakra. Yeah, the crown chakra. Let's hear it for the crown chakra. That is the one. That is the one on the t very, very top. It is purple or a kind of pinkish purple. And um, purple. Let's, let's consult the book, the Howard Aronin book by uh, the crown. Margarita Alcantara. Alcantara. The book is called can Chakra you, Healing. Me? Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Do you ever, do you ever read the word and then learn how to pronounce it before you pick it up and uh, tell us know, what it is? Do you ever do that? Do you ever I am like that guy. Have you ever seen the local news? The local LA news? Yeah, of course. There's the guy named Jeff. I learned from Jeff. <laughs> His name is just Jeff. Is His name is just Jeff. Jeff? Jeff? His name is just Jeff. And he just takes it as it comes. He sits, you know, just sees the words as they come. A lot of times he has no idea what he's saying. And uh, oh I love God. him for it. I love him for it. But he he's mispronounces the, the a lot of that, things that way. Yeah. So he's the guy that if the, the guy the teleprompter, whatever he puts in there, he's just going to go with it. Yeah, so he just goes with it. The he, typist, I get the feeling. There, the guy's going to say it. I don't think he oh, gets God. there early or anything. I think he gets there like right as they're like turning the cameras on. He sits down, sits on his you know shirt, so it's all straight. He looks good, and then he just goes, man. And that's that's the way I am on lunch therapy, especially when I'm reading about the crown chakra. Um, I did actually read this beforehand, but it won't show. It will not show. The crown chakra, Jeff Vaughn. Thank you, Jeff Vaughn. Kamala just. Uh, we're big fans of Jeff Vaughn. Let's hear it for Jeff Vaughn. I would love to get Jeff Vaughn on the show. That would be super fun. That's maybe. Right, I'll reach out to him. Malapropism. A malaprop. That's when you. A malaprop is when you misuse a word. Is that right? Or you completely. Oh, is that the. Wait a minute. Time you use the wrong out. word? When you misuse a word. When you, yeah. You have, when you misuse a word and it's the wrong word, the word's called malaprop? Malaprop. It's like. That sounds like a confusing word too. That's the wrong word. Can it just be like a fucked up word? Well, like no, I think you have to say malaprop and you have to use a wrong, like there's probably a joke there like where you use the wrong word for malaprop and it's a highly intellectual joke. Um, oh, you know what I'm saying? It has to be a word that sounds like malaprop but means something else. Yeah, morphoprop. Ah, uh, darn it, there's another morphoprop. I don't know, that's not even a uh, word. You did it again. Mipaprop? No, uh, yeah. Mal mal malapath. Malapath. Okay, let's see. Just J Comedian malapath. says, Can I meet you guys on November 4th in Ojai? Yes, indeed. My favorite place, 400 episode party, hummingbird party, chakra out. Yeah. Wow. That would be wow. great. I would love she that. Just, just Jay, just please do. Down. She just put it down. I, I'm going to tell you what's happening also on that day is I'm going to be doing a panel at Ojai about using right. YouTube to find your filmer, filmmaker voice. And so far I'm hoping, I, I talked to Seth Word, he's gonna be there with me. I don't know who else is gonna be there with me. I'm still working on some folks, but um, it's kind of, it's gonna be good. Bloss, I think, that, I think I'm gonna be in, I think I'm gonna be in LA. I think I'll be in LA, bro. You better be there, better be there. In Ojai. No, I mean, I'll be. In, I think I'm gonna be. I think I'm gonna be in LA while you're in Ojai, and we'll do the show from Ojai in LA. Okay. I think that sounds yeah. good. We're in the Put planning it, stages right now. Get a suggestion. We asked okay. them, right? We asked that. We asked them. Was, give us some suggestions you want for uh, the 400th show. You know what I'm wondering though? I'm wondering what the internet's gonna be like in Ojai. Okay, here we go. Crown chakra. Oh, the internet. Wow. I said I wasn't gonna talk about anything technical today. There's gonna be nothing technical. Crown chakra. Just Jay says, where do you live, Bloss? Can you give her your address? <laughs> yeah, I'm at 4229 Hawthorne <laughs> Avenue, Los Angeles, California, um, 91496. Bloss lives, can I say, you live like in the General Valley? Where did, don't tell me where I'm living. Don't tell people no. what the hell's it matter. I'm not going to tell you. But I'm not no, going to tell them don't, where. Don't tell people where. <laughs> Baby's telling on us. And here's his phone He's number. Telling on us, baby. No. 
Here we go. The crown one, chakra. Five, nine, three, six. <laughs> Technically, you're being technical. Yeah, I am being a bit technical. All right, let's do this but thing. But, but that's you. That's you. Don't Are you ready for chakra healing? You. Chakra healing. The crown chakra. The crown chakra is the last of the spiritual chakras. The crown chakra is a source of connection to the divine and our higher selves. This is the connection up to God. When the crown chakra is out of harmony, we feel totally disconnected from the divine source, universe, God, des. These are like slashes, whatever you want to call it, your higher power. We may even have anger at God. We may even have anger at God. We have difficulty trusting our path and our lives in general. We feel depressed, alone, unsatisfied with life, and unable to let go of anxiety and fear. Oh my gosh, I had those days this week. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I have that day where my crown chakra is just completely out of whack. And I'm like, what am I doing? I look at the path before me and it seems overgrown with weeds. I get anxiety. I get that word, the big depressed word. I have low energy, whatever. Let's see what Howard says. Not to harp on it. Did Camel ever receive the chakra book? This is it. This is it, right, Howard? Howard, are you watching Am I right? or are you just listening? I, th I think he's probably like behind or something. Oh, so just Jay scared. says she's not a stalker or a killer, serial killer. No, I was more remarking on the fact that we were going to publicly on YouTube just tell everybody in the entire universe where Bloss lives. That's what I was talking about. Not that. you in particular. Please don't just do that. Say. Please don't do that. I have children. <laughs> Chuck Goldsmith says he used to live on Hawthorne, Fuller, Hawthorne, LA. Used to is okay. Jose says, oh, weed. Oh. Hawthorne. Hawthorne and Fuller. Yes, Howie. Did we get the wrong that. book, Howard? I know that place. I, I got to find out from Howard. When Can he catches up to the... Can you imagine if you've been the... reading the wrong book? Can you imagine? Oh, yeah. if you've been it's pretty reading the good, wrong though. It's pretty good. That last thing weeks. that I read was, like, so cool. So now, when it's in harmony, oh. let's, let's look at it being in harmony. When the crown chakra is in harmony... We live in the knowledge of unity, the idea that we're all connected. We understand that we are individual reflections of the divine, trust that we are connected to the divine, and understand that our individual identity goes beyond the physical form. We are also more able to easily elevate our consciousness. Oh my God, look at you, you're elevating your consciousness. That was crazy how you were doing it right when I was talking about it. <laughs> that was beautiful. It's very enlightening. Just Jay says, this is her favorite chakra now. Yeah. I mean, it's a good one. This is your connection with God, goddess, the higher spirit, the divine, your, your the unifying. Whoever you find your spiritual essence from your spiritual see Howard after we shamed Howard for asking the question about the book I'm working out and tuned out for a bit it's fine this is totally fine I'm glad you're working out I should have a treadmill Thank during God. the show too I'm so glad you're enjoying it I'll we're loving dumbbells. this book we're loving this book we're reading it one one Jeff Vaughn page at a time I like the fact that people are working out and listening to the show because um you know, it's, it should be moving. Right? It's 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 therapeutic. I hope that during the dance break he's not on the treadmill, because sometimes people oh, dance yeah. too much and they just go winging right off. I've had that happen. Have you had that happen? Where you're just like, whoa! Yeah, you're, you're, you're running and you're having a good time and you yeah. step off the tread like for and you a just second. Go, Wing. And whack it. Yeah. Whoop it in. Slob fifty four. Slob 90X. Uh, direction connection. You can sell more workout Slop. machines with lunch therapy. I got to start, by the way, I got to start selling some stuff on this show, right? We got to get some, get our marketing well, up. I just, what kind, well, what kind of, what kind of merchandise you want to sell? What, what is well, it? we got to get better shirts. We got to get more shirts because I better. totally dropped the ball oh, on the shirts. I'm thing. sorry. Do we, do we have shirts? I didn't, we, yeah. You don't even know. Oh, the box is we, empty. 
We gotta the have. We gotta sure. have animal shirts. Richard oh, says, "Lost sounds like he's gonna make me an offer I can't refuse." Totally. I'm gonna Listen, make you. I'm gonna make you an family. offer. You can't refuse. Oh, no someday I'll call on you, and I'll uh, ask you for a favor. I don't know. I don't know how it goes. That, it's that fun favor to do, is get me a lozenger, a cherry yeah. lozenger. What is this now, Chuck? Yes, so if Jimi Hendrix didn't do all that LSD, he could have could have still blown his head off and then come back to talk about it. I don't I don't know if that was mistranslated. If anyone, but if anyone, Bob Marley, yes. But um, Jimi Hendrix died because he choked on a sandwich, right? Oh, I thought he OD'd. Well, OD'd and then choked. The choking on a sandwich, I think, is sort of like the like you get UOD and whatever you happen to be eating, that becomes the thing that kills oh, you. Right. I he, don't know. He was really high and then he was, he was eating and then he choked on his sandwich. There's some people that say he That's was like murdered. He probably was, he was such a great advocate and every song he sung had a story to tell about equal rights. and Everybody, and everybody is saying it's Mama Cass. I didn't Cass. shoot the sheriff. Look at this, it was Mama I Cass who choked on a sandwich. But Mama Cass was murdered too because she loved black people and rock and roll and they didn't like her speaking her mind. And she you know, sang like a crazy, bat out of hell, beautiful uh, angel. So, you know, that's what oh they my do, God. dude. This is Those getting days, dark. They're eliminating, they're eliminating the greatness. Young, young. <laughs> Commando you know, Friday, it's happening. Danielle is here, yeah. Yes, uh, it is just get, it just took a nosedive. We were like in the chakra, we're floating around, we're connecting with our higher beings, we're we're com communicating with maybe even maybe even Jimi Hendrix and Mama Cass. Maybe we're co communicating because we're all one unity. And then next thing you know, choking on a sandwich. All right, or, let's uh, like Spank like Spanky said on the the hummingbirds, you, you know, blow your head off. Good job, good job with that, Frank. It was right up here. Okay, kids. <laughs> Let's get ourselves to the crown chakra. And I don't know what oh. is going on with you, Bloss, but your um, LA Unified internet is really causing some freezing. You're frozen. Oh, Chuck is I'm still talking again. about dead celebrities. Um, let's see this one. I, uh, am I really frozen? How could that be my internet? My internet's running fine. I don't know, but Couldn't you're. Could be you? It doesn't seem fine. Could it be you? Does, it could be me. Okay. You know how when you're on a Zoom call with somebody and they like are blaming you the whole time and you're like, it's not me, it's you, it's not yeah. me. I've got, oh, wait a minute, it is me. That's what's happening. <laughs> That's what happens a lot of times. <laughs> it happens all the time. You're like, no, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't, come on, fix your, oh, it's me, sorry. I think Blas has a high fever. I'm, yeah, I'm concerned. You know, it's funny just, Jay, because last last Friday, you said that I sounded like sick when I was on it. And you know what? I was sick all weekend. And I, I mean, I wasn't choking on any sandwiches or anything, but I did not feel well. I'll yeah, tell you. You were, yeah, you were pretty bad. You know, you know sometimes yeah. you got to listen to your body. When your body says, shut it down, shut it down. You got to shut, you got to shut it all down. Put the devices away. You got to close your eyes. You got to be in the dark. Get some good sleep in the dark. Yeah. No sunlight. No blue blue light from devices. No TV. Just shut it down. Let your body recover. Because you know your body recovers when you're sleeping. How That's do you listen to your body though? Do you go like this? Is that how? No. What I happens is, my... is that yeah, you're so you're you're beating yourself so much, right? Like you're going 100 miles an hour. You're doing everything you can, doing everything for everybody else. And then one day you sit down in a chair and your body goes, if I were you, I'd sleep before I take it all away from you. That's what happened. That's totally what happened to me. That's how you just, I got that's how exhausted. You listen, to your body. you listen to your body. I got exhausted, I think. And I just went hey, down and my, I, I was like, I tried to do my Mel Robbins, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, if he hit the floor, nothing happened. Nothing happened. So, okay, we got to breathe. Like we got to breathe. Frozen. We, we are like a halfway through the show, more than halfway through the show. We haven't even breathed. Bloss is looking at us really weird. But let's do this thing. Maybe it'll help. In through the nose, out through the toes. Hold it.
Let it go. <sighs> he now's ready to breathe. I love, I, by the way, I got to say, if you want to listen to lunch therapy and work out, that is a great thing to do. And I appreciate it. And you know what I also love? Non sequitur comments, comments that just come in out of left field. And uh, that's what I enjoy. In through the nose, out through the toes. <laughs> Hold it. Let it go. You know what else I love? If everybody today would just share the show to somebody that you think might enjoy it, I would love that. And I would love it if you could encourage people to subscribe because I never do this. Hit the like button, all that stuff, because that way we can get this to a broader, you know, because people need this. People need the, to know about the chakras and they need to breathe and they need to see some animals. Everybody Gunel. needs therapy. Ginell says he's not kidding, but bananas make you fart. In through the nose, out through the toes. That is a very old reference there from Ginell. Let it go. You mean old like Washington? Washington old? Like uh, Ginell and I, um, I don't know. It's a long story. Uh, listen, I don't listen, even know listen, it anymore, I got I to so. ask you though. Did you and Ginell, did you guys date? We, we were lovers for at one point. Yeah. You know, I'm just, that's why I just, cause you guys got such a connection. Right. I just wanted to make sure I was, I was on the right track. That's all. Now, Ginell yeah, actually. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I was going to say, I'm, I'm sure I'm not wrong when I say it was probably your fault that it didn't work out. Oh, definitely. So Ginell, yeah. when we were youngsters, okay. just you got, better, young, you got better at it. When we were better. young kids experimenting with our sexual uh, proclivities he um he made me a cup of coffee and i said guignel i don't drink coffee and he said well i got a coffee maker we're roommates it makes two cups of coffee i'm always going to give you every morning i'm going to give you one cup of coffee and he said i want you to drink it with no milk and no sugar because i don't want you to be dependent on milk and sugar the rest of your life Instead, oh, he made me dependent on caffeine for the rest of my life. Thank you very much, Ginell, and I love it, and I love caffeine, and I'm very happy, and it opens up my chakra, and that's the end of that story. I don't know the bananas make you fart thing. I remember there was like a sign. I don't know. I'm not getting into all this. You asked for a non sequitur. Thank you. Thank you, Ginell. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Who said the chats are behind? In through the nose, out through the toes. Hold it. Let it go. Maybe everybody oh, um, can follow in line with Just J Comedian and share on Facebook. See, this is the thing about it is. I feel like I'm doing a telethon today. Um, the thing about it is uh, nice. a therapeutic telethon. The thing about it is Facebook keeps us in these small, they don't want us to be all unified. They don't want us to be connected. They want us to be in our little pods. And you only get out of that pod when people share out into the outside, into the rest of it. So we've got a very tight knit group of hummingbirds right now, and we need to spread the love. We need to spread the love. And I expect, you know, that we do this with great joy. And I'm looking forward to the future with this show where there are gonna be more roving reporters, more participation, more, uh, I don't know, you were even saying- Hummingbirds. More hummingbirds. 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 Right? More hummingbirds. More hummingbirds. Aren't hummingbirds like bees? Don't they grab pollen and pollinate and- Oh, that's so interesting because create, we've got that coming up. Light and create blooming. Did I tell you what yeah. the animal therapy is today? No, you didn't. We didn't get it. We were working on something else. Well, on the agenda. Okay, let's move out of this for a second because so thank you to Healing Vibrations. That is, uh, you know, th that is that is the tone of the crown chakra. Hopefully we will be more connected. Okay, so I wanted to tell you all about what we're going to talk about next, which is wildlife therapy. 
And Bloss, you brought up a great point. I don't know what you're doing. Probably taking off your underwear, right? Because it's Commando Friday. You were like, oh, shoot, no, I, I have I not Commando. But I, but I, put a, I put a little um, snuggy blanket around because it was getting a little cold because I don't have any. Uh, it's interesting that you bring up pollinators today because, you know, hummingbirds are pollinators. Am I right? Am I right? Uh, I think they're right. I think uh, I'm right. That's why I, I felt like that because you were telling us, let's get the word out. And, you know, yeah. Hummingbirds are like bees. They, they so share we're get to that. Life. We are going to get to that. Let's go animal therapy. I feel like the chat room is getting faster. Like I'm getting the responses maybe a little faster. Did you see that? Like Ginell was just like absolutely right when I and I think he's talking about them being pollinators, right? Yeah, yeah. Am I right? So, so in other words, we're, since we're since we're since we're moving and we're flowing and our chakras are right, maybe the hummingbird, maybe they're coming at us quicker. Maybe you know we might have cleared we might have cleared know? some blockage. Yeah, with a, right. that little three second delay, maybe maybe we're maybe we're opening up. I think maybe we're starting to get there. Okay, so today, this month, October, is Bat Appreciation Month. I just want to point that out. These are bat some bats. Yeah, these are some bats from the uh, Oregon Zoo. Cute little suckers. Treadmill results. I ate extra prunes today for my blockage. Oh, no. <laughs> See, now the chats are just there on the screen, so I can't control what's going to show up. But we can actually see, like, are they coming faster? Oh, look at her. Bats are cute, right? The bat is not wrong when he says no. bats are cute. No, yeah, no, bats, I don't like, no, they're not cute. They now, do you know? Flying rats. No, they're cute. They're cute. So one of the things I like to do in Rocktober is uh, show as many animals eating pumpkins as possible because oh, animals love pumpkins, by the way. I don't know if you know this. But this is oh. So take a look at this. Here's a rhinoceros. The more different, varied species, genuses that we can see eating pumpkins, the better. Look at him. Look at that. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Isn't that cool? He's trying to get in there. He's trying to get in there because they love pumpkins. Oh, look. Dude, his tongue is way in there right now, dude. I bet. <laughs> I bet it's digging all the good meat inside right now. He's in I there, love dude. That. You know what I always find really great about big animals like this, like large animals? Yeah. Like people are terrified from them, right? Because they think yeah. they're going to eat them. Yeah. But these animals are vegetarians. Most of them are vegetarians. Yeah. They don't eat other animals. They eat vegetation. I know. And you know, mo it's mo most of them. Isn't it amazing that like gorillas just eat uh, fruits and they're like it giantly muscular beings? I don't know how that works. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm going to look it up. I'll look it up after the show so we can talk about it another time. But one of the greatest bodybuilders strongest men in the world yeah vegetarian no way is that vegetarian. true yeah I'll, 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 oh man i want to look it up right now wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. uh just jay says guignel should try a smoothie tea for blockages we need a chakra for that hmm. i like that all right so we're just seeing a few animals here just warming up this is the beaver this is called Filbert is a beaver stress reliever. So let's see if he really is. Oh. I love that. Love that beaver. Wow. Wow. Chuck says it makes you wonder if the animal kingdom they have food attractions and other animals charge an admission like a carnival run by animals for humans. Camilla says beaver so cute. Just Jay, smooth move tea. It's a 
good brand. Smoothie tea is good for my ass chakra, says Guignel. And then Chuck is recommending some kind of... Um... <laughs> I'm not even going to say that. Woodchuck. What? Say it. Read it to me. He says, you, should I really read the Chuck one that says... Um, oh, he says, yeah, I should read it. He says, give up the Oxycontin in your system in the so and you'll be really clear. Oh, me. wait. Look at this pet groundhog. He was a baby groundhog and he started coming up to the door like, what are you doing in there? He would hang out and he always had a very expressive face. Cutie. It's always funny when it's raining out because you see like a little nose through the mist. <laughs> is that real or is that a puppet? I think that's I a real to beaver. Put food on the steps. That's when the cutie started to become a real part of our. That's not a puppet. Food. That's real. I did not expect to be the uh, chef owner of a groundhog restaurant, but he always stuck around. He knew not to leave a good thing. Sometimes I think all animals. Cutie's been visiting for about four years. Could be pets. Summer. Or Cutie's friends. Friends to humans. All animals. Bananas but but, but the, thing, the, the thing about other Sometimes animals being domestic pets yeah. is, is that they're always super nice and looking and cute like this when they're eating because they're hungry and you give them food. But the second you sit down with them and they're nibbling on your ear uh -huh. and eating your ear, that's when it gets uncomfortable. As soon as they start nibbling on your ear, what? As soon as they start, you fall asleep and they start yeah. eating you, nibbling at you. That's when it gets weird. You know? That's when they when they start like than, eating your ear they're, off. They're super cute when you're, yeah, when they're super so cute true. when they're hungry. Like right now, they gave them a celery or something. And, oh, look at how cute. But you let them in your house? Oh man, the fleas that come with those animals. Oh and, man, and fleas. The smell. And I the, know that ooh. one, man. The fleas. Whew. But you know, animals are worse. Okay, this. I'm, I love animals. I'm finally gonna get to the thing that this that I wanted to get to, and this is not it. This not is. The right? oh, what do you, do you know? What that is? That is a, a hummingbird and a bee had a, a, a baby, and it's a hummingbee. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? I mean, you're close. Yeah. That. A lot of animals, Chuck says, a lot of animals are more friendly than people. Ha ha ha. According to animal lovers. And I think, you know, sometimes I feel that way. But I think we know a lot of nice people. Like stray kids. When a beaver smacks his tail in the water, it sounds like a bomb. <laughs> I've never heard that. We got to get that. Yeah. Hummingbird moth. Like Thank you, Ganel. Look, he, he got it. And that was fast, man. That was yeah. fast. I'm telling you, our, our chat speed is just so much faster these days, and I'm acknowledging it, even though that's a technical thing, and we're I said I wasn't going to talk about technical. But but we're opening up our chakra. It's opening up, man. Yeah, I can't I can't control it sometimes when the chakra, my crown chakra, just starts connecting. Look at that. Anyway, okay, so this is just a precursor. This is not what we're talking about. We're, it's a it. This is a moth that pretends to be a hummingbird, essentially. It's, it's pretending to be. Remember, remember earlier in the week where we had the muscle that was pretending to be a fish, and it was luring in other fish. The breathing shook it loose. It totally did. Totally shook it loose. It's meth. What's up with the meth and the oxycon? Why, why, Chuck? Is there so much illicit drug talk on this thing? Even though I know you're like anti these things but it's you know you know, you know why it's because chuck's high right now no he's he's high <laughs> on high he's high on life maybe <laughs> and you look at you you're high on life too you see your face what do you mean I'm you're like the fine. buddha I'm you're like fine. you're like the buddha <laughs> the blast buddha that was crazy exactly who i am i am who i am i am what i am <laughs> i am what i am <laughs> It's it's Chuck, <laughs> Chuck is not high. Okay, let's let's see what Chuck says. Crowd loves to hear about drugs. I told them doing stand-up comedy was like being in an AA meeting. But the good thing was I didn't have to admit that I gave a crack in it. 
Got great laughs at the Laugh Factory. Ha ha. Chuck is doing comedy at the Laugh Factory. I mean, I, I'm so excited about that. He's been going out there. He's been doing it. He has to drive a long way to do it. Has he been doing regular? What's he doing? He's, he's, he's doing. Out. He's, he's up there, there doing it, man. He's doing it. Well, someday we're going to get a video of him doing it. If I, you know, if he can cut down on the OxyContin talk. <laughs> oh my God, this guy. He gave up crack. Why is Bloss continually frozen? I love the frozen nature of his camera. <laughs> What are you talking? I'm not frozen. I'm perfectly fine. You know fine. why he's, I yeah, he's guys. He he. I, I'm who I think I am. maybe he reached enlightenment. That's what happened. This is what happens when you reach enlightenment. You don't have to move anymore. I gotta tell you. You just imagine things. I feel good. I, I, feel, I feel you look fantastic. Good. You look you look like a million bucks. Okay, so this is what we're actually getting to. One might think Joel was doing it on purpose. One might. Okay. Uh, Guignel, do you know what this is? Because Guignel is our resident hummingbird expert. Wow, you froze. You're back. You're back. Yeah. Do you know what it is, Guignel? Let's see how fast Guignel can answer what this is. This is not a well, hummingbird that, moth. That's, no, no. That's a, that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a bluebird, humming, humming blue, blue hummingbird, humming blue. Now Chuck says, I basically said to the people, I love doing open mic because I didn't have to admit that I gave up crack. South African, well, South American they're... hummingbird. Well, okay, they're, they're, I might be they're... wrong, but I'm pretty sure. No, I'm not wrong, actually. I think this has been checked out. Um, this is a, what do you mean this you is... might be wrong? I might be wrong. I'm never wrong on this show. <laughs> yeah. It's my show. I'm never wrong, right? This is a picture by... you be wrong? I know it's like an absurd thought that I could be, that I could be wrong. I'm like I've not even heard such a thought in such a long time. <sighs> that I wrong. I mean, God, how could I be wrong? Okay, so this is a this is a bee hummingbird. Ah. Uh. You know, what like, do you think like, about that? That was the first, my first guess. Earlier, that was my first guess. The other Camilla says, who's Charles J. Sharp? Charles J. Sharp is the, Sharp is the person who took this picture that I have to. Um, oh, Guinell has just redeemed himself. And he said the word Cuba. 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 However you say it. Cuba Gooding Jr. Whatever. It, however it, you it's say Cuba. it. It's Cuba. Cuba. Is it Cuba? Cuba. Cuba. Okay. So Cuba. 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 That's the only place these hummingbirds, these bee hummingbirds are. And this brings us around to answer the question of the day, which is, what is the smallest dinosaur? The smallest dinosaur. I'm Tyrannosaurus <laughs> lid. Look at me, look at me. Look at me, look at me, look at me. What was the song where they say, look at me? This is a little trivia question for y'all. Look at me. Remember that song? Bee Hummingbird. Of course we do. Gunnell always says, be the hummingbird. This is a bee hummingbird. Does anybody know the song where they say, look at me? I know it. I just came up with, somewhere in the back of my mind, the name of the song just pounced forward probably because i've released some crown chakra i can't hear Look the song at me. in my head i can't remember what what's why the mini sore i get it now i was trying to figure out what that was the mini sore exactly the mini sore because you know birds come from dinosaurs they were, they were, the dinosaurs were, they just became birds after the meteor hit the earth and killed most of them off. Right. The only ones that they survived were, were these, these forever. ones. The minisaur. Right. Um, Scarface, Scarface, Tony Montana. Uh, Cuba, I guess, because he's from Cuba. Misty. Cuba. Play Misty for me. Uh, look at me. I as happy as a kitten up in a tree. Oh, that's another Misty. song. And Misty. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm thinking of the, um, uh, I, I don't know if it's Mick Jagger or the Rolling Stones or if it's like a solo Mick Jagger, but there was a song called State of Shock. The dog knows it. 
<laughs> it's misty. Somebody's, I guess I'm, I'm uh, going to start two songs like that. Okay. Yeah, um, you know, Kamala brought up a great thing, and we're going to get to it mm. after I show you a few more mm. of these bee hummingbirds uh, because they're so mm. cool looking and because um, Charles J. Sharp promised it that we could, you know, he put these up there for us to use. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> this is a beautiful bird. That's, these are all bee hummingbirds. And they are, they weigh less than an ounce. Oh. Can you believe it? The female ones weigh more than the males, but not much more. But they're like tiny, tiny little things. And they fly around and they're only in Cuba, Cuba. And uh, they are the world's smallest dinosaur. So I don't want to mention it, but something. Ah, oh, there we go. Finally, I've been shattered. Look at me. Um, anyway, I, I lost something here. I'm not going to tell you what it is because um, I've got to get it back. But it's basically... Everything that I see just went away, and I'm not going to tell you about it because um, I don't know what to do about it. That's never happened to me before. <laughs> this has never happened to me before. Could, vamp, vamp, do how something. Could, how, how could you be wrong? I know. <laughs> how could you be wrong? No way. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it back. I got the show back. Oh, I just breathed just because I needed it. Okay, let's get to some breaking news. Breaking news. Speaking of being wrong. Wait, wait, wait. Before the, before the breaking oh, news. Oh, no. What? 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 No, no, no. Go, 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 go. You all can tell us in the newsroom. Okay, breaking news. Tell me what before the breaking news. I wanted to uh, show you who the uh, bodybuilder vegan guy was. Oh, my gosh. We're going to have to save that for Tuesday. The Later, Vegan later, bodybuilder. Later, later. Or did you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what Cam says. Hummingbirds can fly a thousand miles without food or rest. They can remember every single flower they visit. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What? They have the largest brains of any bird proportionally. Thank you. This is. God, this is so interesting. Um, I'll tell you my. I got to tell you my uh, bee hummingbird facts while I'm here in the newsroom. I'm like, I'm like Jeff Vaughn right now. I'm a lot like Jeff Vaughn. I, maybe that's what yeah, I'm maybe. trying to create, trying to become is Jeff Vaughn. Maybe. Wait, can't you, don't become uh, some, be you. Don't become, oh yeah. you're not anyone else. Be you, you because everyone else is taken, right? Isn't that what they say? Be that's, you because that, everyone else is That's what they say. Taken. That's what. It says. That's what life says. There you go. Okay, so during courtship, these bee hummingbirds, they beat their wings up to 200 times a second. Holy moly. 200 times a second. I'm exhausted. They remember, they remember every flower that they visit. It lives, they live seven years in the wild and 10 years in captivity. I got to say, does Chuck have bee hummingbird facts? No. Let's see what Chuck says. Chuck, Chuck's on Oxycontin. Chuck says, I actually posted on Facebook that people should watch the show. They're going to tune in and see you guys in breaking news. I know. It's going to be so good. <laughs> the, the bee hummingbird is also the smallest known dinosaur as no smaller bird or non-avian dinosaur has been found in the fossil record. No smaller bird. Uh, Boney, Boney, while we're, while we're talking about hummingbirds, put hummingbirds up. Boney, what, come, on, come on, man. Come on, Boney. Boney, come on. I don't know what I don't know what Boney's I don't I told know. What you, I told Boney's you I told you I want to tell you what to do when we're on the air. We're you guys gotta air. you guys gotta stop it's, fighting, I think. Um because it's I'm, you know, I'm not starting, I just want him to do his job. It's starting just to be job, it's starting man. to disrupt things. Oh look, I'm there. There's Jeff Vaughn. Uh let me just whoa, show you. Whoa. So who's this guy? This is him, huh? He's a vegetarian bodybuilder. Wow. This guy. Look at, the, look, at, look at the top. Look at that. Dude, this guy is ripped. He's ripped, dude. They show him pulling like a semi, like an 18-wheeler. He's pulling it down the road or up wow. like a, a, an incline. 
Oh man, dude, this That's guy's cool. and uh, and he's he's convinced totally a lot of other bodybuilders, a lot of other, a lot of other people. Yeah, to uh, because you can get as much protein out of vegetables as you, that you can out of broccoli. Meat. My friend has lots of protein in it, right? Some, so some people, but some people they eat too much protein because they're trying to build muscle. Yeah, and they're you know they're not digesting it properly. It's not digesting fast enough out of their body, you know, to get to suck the nutrients out. I'm not but saying this, everybody. I'm just saying this is know. definitely not a fitness show. Yeah. And you know, I could tell no, you all about, about this stuff because you know, obviously, you and I are both just ripped, and so we could it's give a I lot do. of advice about it's this what stuff. I do. <laughs> so I want to talk about William Shatner. Kamala mentioned this. Billy, yeah, Billy. William Shatner. We went up in space, and at the time, I did you know talked about it on the show, and I was like, I'm really worried because I think this is going to ruin a lot of our uh, you know dreams as as human beings because we watched him portray this kind of future where we'd be traveling in space and he was the captain. And, you know, I think psychologically, if he went up in a big firecracker and just blew up in the sky or like went into space and floated, up, floated off to nowhere, it would be psychologically traumatic for everyone involved. Oh, well, that would have been the worst. But the interesting thing was he just wrote a book and it's quite amazing because his experience up there was not what one would think. I remember at the end, he came down and Jeff Bezos was like all excited and happy because he went up with him and they were like there and Shatner just looked disturbed. He looked really disturbed. And now it turns out his book just came out and in Variety, they were talking about it. His book is called Boldly Go, Reflections on a Life of Awe and Wonder. And he talks about this journey to space, right? He's look the at oldest. This quote. Look at the quote. Filled me with overwhelming sadness. That's so the, I don't want to hear that from I don't want to hear that from Captain Kirk. Come on. He said when he was going, okay, this is I'm gonna read a passage from the book that was in the variety article. He said he experienced something called the overview effect which apparently happens to a lot of astronauts they get up in space and they look down at the earth and they look out into the void of space and they have this overview effect which makes them all of a sudden really value earth and and our experiences on earth and and we suddenly see how we're damaging this incredible thing and he said outside of that all he saw was death when he looked into space all he saw was death because you know there isn't as far as we know we haven't seen any life so he said this he said this is a quote from the book it can change the way we look at the planet but also other things like countries, ethnicities, religions. It can prompt in an instant a reevaluation of our shared harmony and a shift in focus to all the wonderful things we have in common instead of what makes us different. It reinforced tenfold my own view on the power of our beautiful, mysterious, collective human entanglement. And eventually it returned a feeling of hope to my heart Okay. In this insignificance we share, we have one gift that other species perhaps do not. We are aware, not only of our insignificance, but the grandeur around us that makes us insignificant. That allows us perhaps a chance to rededicate ourselves to our planet, to each other, to life and love all around us if we seize that chance. This is Boldly Go, Reflections on a Life of Awe and Wonder. And I think that brings us back around to the chakra that we experienced at the beginning of the show, right? That we're all one, we're all together. But, yeah, the, the, but he, I mean, his, the passage from the book, um, you know, that, that, that feeling like what he saw, what he experienced right pulling yeah. away from earth seeing you know death meaning just like he probably saw death like look at the space look at space right now look at that. Yeah. Look at how big that is out there how do you survive out there but then look at how we live we live on this beautiful planet earth yeah and we have so many different types of us but we're real really all one race the human race right yeah that's talked about all the time 
Yeah. And yet we're divisive, you know, like we, we, instead of looking at w how great we are together, the harmony we have together, a lot of, a lot of other people look at the differences and, and what, how threatening that is to each other. And it's like, you know, it's such a, it's such a bad way to, to, to view this wonderful life that we've been given on earth, you know? And, and a lot of times people experience that, like, like I went away, right. I went away one time uh, on a trip and um, I was by myself, went for a walk when I was by myself in another city and I didn't had no idea where I was at. And then there wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of people walking around. There was a lot of people moving around and I sat on this bench and I just kind of in reflection thought, wow, I, I'm, absolutely nowhere where I know I'm at. No one knows I'm here. No, you know, people I'm with, they don't know where I'm at. And, and I'm in this, a place where uh, if somebody walks up to me, nobody knows me, but, but it's so isolating that you could, you could reflect and go, man, how great do I have it? How great do I have it? I could walk out of this, go home, be with my family, you know, be with my friends and, and, and continue to live my life, but, and stop looking at things that, you know, I always tell, I always tell like, uh, when, when you have kids, when you're raising kids, I always tell them, you know, don't worry about what you don't have. Appreciate what you have and be thankful. You know what I mean? Just because yeah. one, one kid has something, well, they have it. I really don't care about them. I don't care about that kid. That's their, that's their parents. Their parents, their parents bought him an iPhone 14. That's great. Congratulations. He's 13. That's great. You know, good for him. But, but your phone works fine. You know, you got a seven. I got a seven. Your mom's got a seven. It works, right? Why do we yeah. always bring it back to yeah. iPhones? Yeah. Why does every time we talk, we always bring it back to iPhones? I, I'm just, I, I kind of brought it there because I just was saying with William Shatner. No, I believe space, what right? you say. You got to be, no, I you got to you you have know. gratitude for what you have, right? Yeah. Because it's be a lot. Be thankful, be appreciative of what you have. But if, Because if you constantly worry about what you don't have, you're not living, you're not in the moment. That's you're right. not right now. You know, I love that. And, and Thanks I, for it's that. It's almost I'm almost glad to hear that William Shatner experienced that, and he wrote it in a book. I'm glad that because, like you said, if something bad happened, it'd be a horrible experience. It kind of made it worth it, though. It kind of made it worth it what he did. He yeah. said when he was going That's up, though, I mean, he was yeah. like, he kept in his mind, he kept seeing the Hindenburg, and you know the oh, disaster, God. the Hindenburg disaster. He couldn't get it out of his head. Yeah. All right. He was way up there, looking down. Oof. Okay, it's time for dance break here. Let's see one more comment here. And I agree that American children are raised with so much and so little gratitude or understanding of what most other children experience growing up in other countries. Well, adults as well. well it's good that more people taught. understand <laughs> that we're all fucked. <laughs> Can y'all? Oh my God. But, 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 but he put the button right on it. That's exactly doing? what we're talking about. All right, let's yeah, do, let's do, let's dance it out. It's time to dance it out. Thanks everybody for being here. Remember, Richard Gaddis is performing on Saturday night um, at the tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, the Speakeasy. What what is it called again? Shit. Saint and Center. Saint and Center. Saint Thank Saint you. And Center. Thank you. All right, Saint and Center, North Hollywood, North Valley, Hollywood, California. Dance break time. Simon and Garfunkel, this is going to be a real mellow one hey, for a really mellow, we're matching fun the girls. show. We're matching I know. The girls. Well, that was by I'm design. Sitting in the railway station, got a ticket for my destination. Um, mm -hmm. these, these girls are attracted to one night stands, my suitcase and guitar in hand. Every stop is neatly planned for a poet and a one man band. Oh, this is not the boxer.
Somebody else wants to say something about a banjo. A slow banjo would be good. Where my thoughts escape in a hole. Where my music's playing. Or some bananas. Where my love lies waiting silently for me. And then I'll sing my songs again. I'll play the game and pretend. But all my words come back to me. Shades of mediocrity. Thanks, everybody, for being here. See you on Tuesday. Wonderful, wonderful. Those girls were great. They awesome. were great, weren't they? Thank you, hummingbirds. Thank you, hummingbirds.